Hello everyone and welcome to this, another episode of Game Marketing and Funding. My name is Kasanis. Guys, this is going to be the last episode in this short series. This is the final speaker we had in the final class of Centennial's Game Marketing course. Today we're going to be hearing from Shelley, and she represents the Canada Media Fund. And from their website, the Canada Media Fund is a public-private partnership founded on April 1st, 2010 by the Department of Canadian Heritage and the Canadian Cable Industry. It is used to fund the creation of original Canadian content and support the Canadian media industry. So this particular episode is for my Canadian viewers. All right, guys, I hope you enjoy. Um, so hi, I'm Shelley Coltish from uh, Telefilm Canada, and uh, we work. We administer the Canadian, the Canada Media Fund program. Sorry. <laughs> um, anyway, so uh, basically, the Canada Media Fund is a federal fund um, for the whole country, um, and they fund a combination of television programs and um, digital interactive digital media and web series uh, programming. Um, so. Uh, we have a bit, approximately three hundred and fifty million dollars in the budget every like each year is around that, um, and there's about forty five million dollars available for interactive digital media and web series. Um, yeah, I see that Miriam has just posted the guidelines. So, um, essentially, we have um, probably over thirty different. Oh, programs. I forgot. Yeah, I forgot to tell you, Shelley. We're recording these for the students that are far away and can't make okay. it. Is that That's okay? fine. That's no okay. problem. I, I, there's, I'm recorded on the internet in many of these presentations, so I'm <laughs> used to it. Um, at least this time you can't see me sitting here with no makeup on in my loungewear. <laughs> um, so in any case, about, about 45 of the $350 million is designated towards what we call the experimental stream, uh, which is essentially interactive digital media and web series. Um, the bulk of the money, as you can then infer goes to television shows, um, and that's mainly because the money comes from uh, heritage, but also quite a bit comes from cable subscription providers. The CRTC has them contribute a portion of their sales to the go back into original Canadian programming. So the bulk of it does go towards television um, funding because of that. But uh, the experimental stream is what you guys will be interested in because that is, a, you know, if you're a video gaming class, we do find quite a lot of video games in this stream. There are several different programs. Um, I won't go into detail on the web series program and, unless anybody's interested. You can ask me in the Q&A later if you want to hear a little bit about that. Um, but I will talk about the experimental stream. So it's a different focus from um, some of the other programs available, like the ones Kim just gave. Um, it's uh, There are various uh, focuses. Um, there's two different programs. There's the Innovation and Experimentation Program and the Commercial Program. Um, so the Commercial Program focuses more on um, projects that are going to get a big return on investment. So our, our stuff are not grants. Uh, our money is is either repayable advances or recoupable investments. And uh, we would get our money back based on sales in the investment. Um, and uh, the commercial program is more concerned with, you know, there is a partial, like the score for content is very small and mostly they want you to tell us you know, what is your monetization plan? Who's your target audience? And how fast do you think you can get our money back to us? Uh, and the reason we want to recoup our money also is to invest in projects in the future as well to grow the budget. Uh, now the innovation and experimentation program on the other hand is, while there is a score for what your um, monetization plan and your target audience are, it's very small. And most of the mark is just on what the project is. Um, and they're looking for, you know, projects with innovation in either content or technology. It doesn't have to be both, it could be one or the other. And uh, we've, you know, we've had these programs have been around for several years. Um, I find that most of the innovation requests are innovation on content, not technology, because a lot of the technology um, sort of innovation goes to other funds in the government for like scientific and engineering and, and that sort of thing. Um, so. Those are the two main streams. Uh, and then there's also different stages. So we fund 
conceptualization, prototyping, and production. Uh, in conceptualization and, and prototyping, you don't have to decide whether you're going to innovation or going to commercial. Uh, it's before that. Um, so conceptualization is the only one we have that's first come, first serve, that is not jury-based. Um, and conceptualization is essentially you can get up to $15,000 to do like some R&D on a, an idea in its early stages, uh, it just has to be eligible. And uh, what is eligible is uh, projects that are connected to the cultural sector, which means it has to be related in some way to arts and entertainment. So video games are entertainment, so they're always eligible. Uh, but sometimes you're doing something that is not a video game. Like, you know, some people try to submit like a fitness app, for example, and we don't, we, unfortunately, that's the health and fitness industry. We don't do that or like business software or something like that. So you have to make sure that what you're doing is related in some way to arts and entertainment. So if it's not a game and you're not sure if it qualifies, uh, it's always a good idea to call us and talk about it before you try to apply. Because uh, the application is a lot of uh, <laughs> nice. Uh, the application is a lot of um, work to do and you don't want to you know, go through all that work to prepare an application just to get a rejection letter at the end saying this is not eligible for our fund. Um, so we're very friendly and, uh, you know, we will talk to you. You can call us, you can email us, uh, and we can talk to you about your idea and whether it qualify uh, and talk about which stage you want to apply in. Because you don't have to go from conceptualization, prototyping to production. You can go straight to production if you already made your prototype, for example. Um, so we'll go to the next stage. It's prototyping. Um, and prototyping is, for example, uh, you need to, you know you know what your idea is. You don't need to go through conceptualization because you already know very well what your idea is, and you're coming to us to build the fully functional prototype essentially. Uh, and it should be something that you're not going to launch um, commercially at the end of the process. You're just you know going to do beta testing or something. Um, and then, of course, production is when you have a prototype and you want to build the entire project and then release it commercially. I mean, even in the innovation fund, which is not commercially driven, we still expect you obviously to be releasing it at the end of the cycle of what you're doing. Um, and then, you know, just back to who is eligible. Um, so you have to be a Canadian citizen or a permanent resident of Canada. If you're a permanent resident, there's some little rules around that and you should talk to us to make sure you're still eligible because if you wait too long to apply for citizenship after you're eligible, you can become ineligible. Um, but, you know, don't don't worry about that unless you think you might have a problem. And then in which case, again, call us and talk to us and see whether you're eligible to apply. Um, the con conceptualization program, you have, to, you have to have never received funding successfully from the experimental fund in order to be allowed to apply, which I would imagine is all of you would be eligible for that project program. Um, and then also we don't allow individuals to apply, uh, or well, they can apply, but they have to incorporate if they get accepted so that we can contract with an incorporated company. So we don't fund nonprofits and we don't fund individuals. We only fund for-profit incorporations. So that's something that you want to think about if you decide to apply, let's say for conceptualization, to just sort of work out an idea and get that small amount of money, um, you're going to have to think about how much will it cost you to incorporate. Because if you get, if you are successful with your application, you're going to need to do that. Um, <clears throat> so you can ask for in all of our funds up to seventy five percent of your like budget. You're expected to make a budget to show us what are your costs, how long is the project going to take. Um, you know, what are people going to charge? And, and then you come out with like a budget number of what it's going to cost to do what you're doing in each stage. Uh, and we, you can never fund 100%. We will only fund 75%. Um, and then there are dollar caps in each stage. So in conceptualization, the dollar cap is 15000 In prototyping, it's 250000 And in production, it's $1.5 uh, And in production, you are expected to have your full marketing plan your full marketing and promotion plan as a part of the production budget, um, which is why the cap is so high. Um, how, how are these selected? Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, no, that's just me. I, I'm trying to take notes and I just realized there was one. Thing. Oh, sorry, yeah, pro prototyping is 250000 and production is $1.5 million. <clears throat> um, and, and like I said, in production, you're expected to put your entire marketing budget into the budget. 
Um, now I'll just talk about how these projects get selected. So conceptualization is a first come first serve fund. I believe it has a deadline in September. Um, and that one is basically you apply um, on the date that it opens or, or it says opening date and closing date, like it gives you like about a six month window to put your application in. But if any, like we opened this fund for the first time last year and all the money was gone on the first day. So like there's, it's yes, there's, you know, it opens and closes on certain dates as per the website, but really just look at the date in September and consider that the deadline, because if you don't apply on the first day, the money's going to be gone. So <laughs> if you want to apply for that, just plan on that being the day. Um, and, uh, Basically, if your project is eligible, you will just get money. Uh, you may not get the full 15000 if too many people ask, because sometimes if there's too many requests, we have to prorate it. So last year was the first year, and everybody got who was uh, eligible got $12,000 because we didn't have enough to give everyone 15000 So we prorated it. Um, they put more money into the budget this year, so hopefully we won't have to do that this time, but we'll see. Um, and then the rest of the funds that we have are selective and we hire a jury and we also have a team of um, specialists that work at the telefilm that score them. Um, so an international jury scores the uh, production files and uh, the prototyping files are scored by our internal team. Um, I'd say there's about anywhere from a 20 to 30% success rate to get money. It's very competitive. So you have to really make sure you're ready to do it and that you can do a good job at the application. Um, the scores are broken down by team. Uh, so they look at the experience of your team and what they've done in the past. And, you know, so if you are, if you are brand new to the industry, you may want to try to connect with, uh, you know, a, like create yourself like a mentor to connect with who's, who's been successful before. Um, not in conceptualization like that we don't care about how much experience you have you just well we do except you only need one year's experience working in a digital media type or, or entertainment job so actually people that have worked in tv and film are also qualified to apply um but uh in the uh pr prototyping in the production funds you are scored out of a certain mark. Um, it varies from program to program on your team. So, you know, you know, if you're brand new to the industry, you may want to work with some more experienced people to give yourself a better chance or have a mentor on board or, or an advisory board or something like that. Um, and then the other thing, so then the other scoring criteria is the content. So in prototyping, the content, it's just originality and creativity. In innovation, it's innovation, and in commercial, it's, again, originality and creativity and potential for return on investment. Uh, then you scored also on financial viability. Uh, financial viability means we're looking at your budget. Is it reasonable for what you say you're doing? Um, and uh, we look at your financial structure. So we want to see, I mean, obviously, if you're asking for 75% from us, that's fine. Um, and there's no, like, you don't get any brownie points for not asking for 75%, so don't be afraid to ask for the maximum. Um, everybody does. And, uh, and then the other 25%, that's really what we're looking at. Is it just you that's putting in the other 25% or do you have other investors or do you intend to go to Kim for money <laughs> as well? Cause we do double dip on some projects. Um, and then the fourth scoring criteria is called strategic positioning and marketing. Now, obviously in prototyping. This is like worth five points. It's not worth much out of 100 because we know it's early, uh, but we still want to know that you know what your revenue model is and your target audience is. And, um, you know, we want a little bit of a analysis of like who are your competitors. So um, if there are similar projects out there, like say, you know, say that you're aware of these projects and here's how yours differs and, you know, why somebody would choose to use yours. Um, and then uh, it's it's obviously weighted heavier in production. You really do need then to have a full marketing plan, um, and like you need to detail in the commercial fund how you are going to achieve your numbers on profits and return on investment. In innovation, you don't have to do that, but you do need to talk about your marketing plan. Um, and that's sort of how it's done for scoring. Now I'm trying to think what else should I tell you. Um, we have deadlines twice a year for prototyping, for innovation and experimentation production, and for commercial production. We have the one 
you know, opening date slash deadline for conceptualization. Um, and it takes generally when you apply to prototyping or production funding, it takes about eight weeks to get an answer. Um, and then if you do get selected, it takes about another month or so to get your contract and money. It could take longer though, depending on if your business analyst asks for documents and you haven't given it to them. Um, so it's kind of up to you how fast it goes to get your money if you do get selected. Um, and uh, let's see, let's see. Um, well, web series I'll just briefly touch on. There are several web series programs in Canada. There's the Independent Production Fund, there's Bell Fund, there's Ontario Creates, and then there's us. And ours is for second seasons or later only. So it's also not a grant, it's an investment. So we are looking to see how successful your previous seasons were. Um, and that's, I believe you can apply for up to 60% of your budget on that one. Um, or $250,000, whichever is less. So that's a, that's essentially an overview of our experimental programs. Um, we also have a kind of a, a co-production with the, or like a co-development fund that we partnered with the Independent Production Fund on to develop web series. So if that's interest, you should take a look at that. Um, <laughs> and then we have a series of international incentives none of which are on the website right now, but if you if you have, you know, potential to co-produce with producers in another country, we have several countries that we work with, and most of our international incentives are to do digital media projects, uh, including video games, um, VR, AR, XR, anything um, that's digital media, cultural related. Um, and what happens there is if you're working with a producer in another country, you, oops, somebody's phoning me, let me just hang up. If you work with a producer in another country that's in one of these ones that we're doing, uh, we match the fund. So like if we pick the project, you get funding from us and funding from, let's say, the Danish Film Institute, which is one of the ones we work with. Um, and then you have to split the cost between the Canadians and the Danish or whatever it is. So none of that is on the website right now because we launched all of our domestic programs on April 1st, but we kind of partner with those other funds throughout the year and there's press releases that go out. So if you're interested in any of that, I would sign up for CMF email updates uh, and then you will get an alert uh, as things get launched. So um, what are the international productions? So they're, they're mostly, they're not co-production funds. They're actually co-development funds for the most part. There's a few that are co-production, um, but the countries we've worked with that did digital media were Argentina, um, Northern Ireland, Scotland, Denmark, Luxembourg, um, Berlin, not Germany, but just Berlin, <laughs> um, and uh, New Zealand, Belgium, but only the Wallonia region of Belgium, which I never heard of until we had this fund. It's apparently the French speaking part of Belgium. <laughs> so, um, and I think that's, oh, in Jerusalem specifically, not all of Israel. Um, so that's what, oh, in Colombia in the past also. So that, that's what we've had before. Um, we also have ones with Ireland and South Africa, but they're only for TV script development, so not worth really talking about. Um, oh, I wanted to ask also, sorry, what is but... the... Oh, sorry, go ahead, Miriam. I wanted to ask, what are the, how does the repayment <clears throat> work of the... Okay, so how it works is in conceptualization and prototyping, it's called a repayable advance. That doesn't mean you're necessarily going to have to repay it um, because if you do then come to us for production and you get selected for production, it gets rolled into the production investment. And I'll get into how that works in a second. Um, so let's say you do conceptualization, you do your R&D with your $15,000 that we gave you, and then you say to yourself, you know what? Now that I've done my research and development, I realize this is not going to work. Uh, it's too similar to something on the market, or I just don't want to do it anymore. If you shut it down and you don't go forward with your project, you won't owe us any money. Um, but if you do go forward, you know, one would assume you'd then come to prototyping and then maybe to production later. Um, and if you don't get the money for those and you decide to keep going forward, technically you're supposed to be repay us if you produce it even without us. Um, but we also allow conversion to an investment. So if you can't afford to repay us, even though you want to do it yourself, we could become a minor investor in the project. 
Um, and it would have to be looked at on a case-by-case -case basis. And prototyping works the same way. So essentially, if you come to production, we just roll your prototyping advance into production investment, and then we recoup on the total. Um, but uh, if you if you decide to go forward on your own or you get another investor, um, you know, then you have to technically repay us or ask to convert it to an investment. And then on a case-by-case -case basis, we'd figure out what percentage we would get of the profits. For production, it's very simple. Um, the production investment, we get 15% of your gross sales, and that's it. And then you keep the other 85% and do whatever you want with that. Um, and uh, we only ever stay in invest as an investor for seven years. And if you haven't repaid us the full amount by seven years, then we drop out and we don't expect anything else. Um, and then the prototyping uh, also, same as conceptualization, if you prototype something, and it doesn't do well in beta testing, you decide, you know what, I'm not going to do this, then you don't owe us any money at all. Um, but if, uh, So for production, we, we expect you to report on sales twice a year for the first four years and once a year for the last three years. Even if you're getting no nothing, like you could just send in zero dollar sales reports. Um, but essentially, if you do pay us all of our, let's say you do have, um, you know, in the commercial fund, for example, you have something that does really well and it recoups all of our money back. Uh, we actually um, drop our percentage by half, I think it is, and then do profit participation until the seven-year term is out. Um, and then there's, of course, the scenario where if you're super successful and somebody decides to buy you out, like we've had that happen in the past, somebody got bought out by Microsoft. And so they just basically, because of uh, the success they had, were able to just repay us our entire investment and get us out of there. So that can happen on a case by case basis, but it's, you know, it's pretty rare. That's, that's sort of, that's sort of it for an that's overview. It. I think like now I should take questions. 10 minutes for questions. Is everybody, this is it. You've been troopers, all of you. This has been a great afternoon and a great last class. Does anybody have any questions for Shelley before we move on and enjoy our summers of self-isolation? Is this now, love pause? It is. This is, oh, this, is my, this is my party class. My party oh, class with four guest speakers. But everybody's been wonderful. Uh, and we would have had a party if we were allowed to be in class. Oh, really? says with tears in our eyes. Thank you so much. That was extremely clear. Great. He has a question. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, I think so. that maybe for me a question that I think is uh i think it's really important for new for new developers mm. um what can you do if you know that at some point in the future you want to apply for cmf but maybe it's not this year or next year what can they do to build up their portfolios to make themselves oh, well definitely more I would say fundable? work for the people that we are funding <laughs> if, they <can> get, <laughs> if they could get jobs with these uh, companies there's lots of them in toronto um you know, I don't want to favor anybody, so I don't really want to name anyone, but you can kind of go on our database and you can go on the oh, website yeah. and narrow it down. Like, but you know, I'll throw some names out there uh, that get a lot of funding. I'm trying to think of Toronto specifically. So like Secret Location, Dark Slope, uh, Game Pill. Yeah. Uh, I, God, I can't, I'm blanking. Uh, um, Finish Line Games. What else is there? there? There's a lot, but like, do you, you know, I'm sure you could look on Interactive Ontario, even on their database, yeah. um, to see like who are the active digital media producers. And sometimes the funded projects database that we have doesn't help because it mm -hmm. it wouldn't say, for example, secret location. It'll say like ABC Productions Inc. because they open separate companies for each project that they have, and it's under the parent company. But uh, mm -hmm. but you know, sometimes it, it you can say, oh, Cream Productions. That's another one. Um, but yeah, I would say like. You know, if you want to build up your resume, get a job with an active production company uh, that's doing video games or other digital media, VR experiences and other things, um, because that will really help you show that you have experience. Okay, that led me to two new questions. So okay. one thing Kim had mentioned when she was just talking to us was that sometimes the things that interact that uh, Ontario creates and CMF funds are different. Can you talk a little bit about where those differences are? I mean, you talked about it a bit in your conversation sure. earlier, but you want to just make it really clear for us? Well, so I think that, um, I think, for example, Ontario creates out of their interactive digital media 
fund will fund educational stuff and we don't fund e-learning or educational software um we we will fund educational games if it's mostly a game so like it's like a game to teach children math or something like that would be fine but like straight up e-learning like rosetta stone or that kind of thing no um so that's that's one big difference um i'm trying to think like generally though a lot of what we fund would be similar okay but it's more how you would present what you were asking for. Fun. Like I know that that's the thing too is that their their focus is stimulating the economy in Ontario and supporting Ontario companies, and that's you know yes we're trying to support the industry as a whole, but really we have a different focus. We're looking for innovation in one, we're looking for return on investment in the other, and you know part of it is supporting Canadian companies too, but that's not the main goal like it is for Ontario Creates. Okay, so when you're working on your applications for CMF, you need to be really focused on those two pivot points, not. Right. And we do, um, for each fund, we have a required documents checklist uh, and, a, and the guidelines, which has the published scoring grid in it. So it's super transparent on what they're actually looking for in the grid. So you have to really read the grid and the guidelines. It says what the scoring breakdown is and focus on that. But the required documents checklist is um, one of the support documents that you download uh, as in addition to the budget template. You have to use our template. Don't make your own. Um, and you have to follow our required documents checklist. Don't ever try to freestyle your application and just do it your own way. Uh, that, is, that is a guaranteed way to not get picked. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so, you know, because we've had people say, well, this is how I presented it to a VC. Um, so I'm just going to give them that. And it's not in the format we need it to be in to score it properly. And it, it immediately just gets sort of tossed because it's not eligible because it's not done properly um, or it gets scored and it doesn't do well because they don't have the information that they asked for so the checklist is really specific the checklist breaks down every single document that you have to submit it's somewhere around 15 different things um, and it tells you exactly what to do uh, and then there's a little comment box on each item in the checklist saying what they're looking for and that and what is the page limit and stuff and then you can also submit uh, support material um, which is um, you know our like art, you know, mood boards, um, you know, uh, videos, if you have like even a little example of what you're doing, you've made maybe a little small demo of it or something. Um, and you can also, if you really want to go crazy, you can make a video pitch and submit that as your support material too. Uh, NFB, uh, yes and no. So we can't fund NFB directly because that would be like the government funding the government, which is not allowed. But we have funded several NFB co-productions where they're a co-producer. Uh, we will not fund NFB's portion of the budget. So whatever NFB is going to do in the budget, they have to pay for that on their own. But we will fund the independent producer's costs. So if an independent producer is in co-production with the NFB, we can fund 75% of the independent producer's costs, but just not any of the NFB costs. Um, and we've, we funded a few things that are with the NFB. Uh, I have one more question and then I think were good. Um, you had said that with secret location, they would file their projects under different. Oh, I don't know. I don't. I don't want to like. I don't want to oh, say okay. that. I don't want them to like sue me for saying wrong information. But, like, but it's no. But it's, it's, it, we had, we had a different do. conversation about if you're looking for private investment, is it good to take your project and make a shell like a company for your project? Problem is, or you um, take the private investment. This, and I was wondering this, if you take that. Yeah. So this is basically standard practice in the television and film world like every film and tv producer opens like except for small documentary producers opens a separate incorporation for each one for tax purposes now for digital media people tend not to as much because apparently and i don't know the rules so don't quote me on this but apparently if you do that you could render yourself ineligible for the digital media tax credit from ontario mm. creates so so you might not be doing that and especially as a small company you probably won't be doing that because you can just cover everything under your main incorporation but i think you do need to because i noticed less digital media clients do that um because of the tax credit in ontario and how how like how they need you to be structured in order to be eligible um so i mean maybe huge companies like entertainment one which secret location is under have figured out a way to get around that but most of the companies don't do that simply because they can't or they'll be ineligible for tax credits got it that's a really good point it's very complicated 
This it is, is the thing I want my students to understand. <laughs> yeah. Right before yeah, they there's lots the of them. Summer, it's this... extremely complicated, and one year is not yeah. enough, or like one semester is not enough. But... I mean, like if you're an idea person and you're not interested in getting into all this paperwork, like, you know, hire a business, somebody who likes to do the business side to work with you. Mm -hmm. find a partner so you know if you if you want to just be all creative all programming and, and that sort of thing and not deal with any of this you, you need to find a partner who likes to do this kind of thing because yeah. it's a lot of work is that is that like there's the also the accelerator program at the cmf is that oh, a good idea for students right think so about the ac accelerators well unfortunately you can't um unless you've been funded by us so the accelerator partnership program so far is only open to clients who have received production funding Oh, okay. And then you can automatically on a first come first. That's why I didn't talk about it. Uh, oh, okay. You can automatically on a first come first serve basis apply for thirty thousand dollars to work with accelerator on our approved list. But you can also, if there's other accelerators that pop up that you see that you want to work with, you can approach us about working with somebody off the list. Um, I have asked my um, the policy writers at the CMF, like, will they consider possibly to add? you know, pro qualified prototyping clients that we funded in prototyping, because I, I kind of think you should probably be able to do it at that stage as well, because maybe you need help earlier on in the game. Uh, so far, no, but they're considering okay. it. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, it's not something you can apply for unless you've already been picked. Got so. it. Do you think that there's a value in students? I mean, the colleges are now all starting different applied research facilities as well, which I think are sort of like, I think of them as like junior junior accelerators, because you can learn a lot about yeah, it. Well. Absolutely. I mean, I think that also, you know, going to things like Kim was talking about, like the game jams um, and just networking events. And there's, you know, various conferences in Toronto. I mean, obviously all of that has been kind of <laughs> postponed during COVID, but, uh, you know, there was one called VRTO, which is all the virtual reality. There was the gaming expo. Um, uh, there's lots of stuff that they have in Toronto that's worth going to. Um, it you know once they start actually doing it again, obviously. So <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay, there's two minutes left of class. Does anybody have any burning questions, or should I say thank you to Shelley and then thank you to everybody else who is here today and wish you all a great, if quiet summer, and hope to see you all in person in September. Last two minutes to get your questions in, and a big round of applause to Shelley who is. Probably the most succinct, that was the most succinct description of the CMF I've ever heard in my life. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> I, tend to, I tend to talk fast, so I got it all in there. <laughs> all right, well, thanks everybody. I'm gonna, how do I get out of this room? Do I just click on my name or something? Uh, do you see the little telephone that's on the bottom left-hand corner? Um, do I there should, should, oh, should be your, there should be a little name, your name, and then like a gear wheel on the right. And then if you look right up that, there's like a telephone with an X over it. Next to voice. Telephone. I just see mute, deafen, and settings. Um, are you sure it's on the left? It is on the left for me, but I'm not in the website. You can also yeah. just close that browser window. Found it. Found yeah. It. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you for the screenshot. I found it just before that. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I'm going to go then. So, um, oh, should I actually type my email address just in case you guys oh, yeah, want great. to ask further questions? This is my email address. So, um, so yeah, I work at Telephone Canada. I know it's confusing because the actual funding comes from the Canada Media Fund, which is a totally different organization, but we administer their funds for them and they write all the rules over there. So if you want to get in touch with me to talk about any specifics or you you know think you maybe you want to apply for conceptualization or something, feel free. All right. Thank you. Enjoy lunch. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye.